Only thing bigger than La Cienega's ego were those flappers she used to swim with. What no now? <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning back in. You already know what it is. We're doing another character breakdown from the Proud Family series. This time on the one and only La Cienega Boulevard. She was crafted to be Penny's arch nemesis, like the antagonist, you know, the main antagonist, next door neighbor. But the difference with her is she's richer supposedly but y'all know how i do with these breakdowns being a fan of the show watching the original series and the reboot seeing the kind of character arc they gave la Cienica, i really want to do a little deep dive and give my opinion and give y'all's too because we all know this is animation a lot of people don't take it seriously it's just animation you know with the dj video a lot of people are saying that but i'm like there's also realism in this they base these characters they base the personalities off real people off real personalities off real life so let's talk about this kiwi wanted to join me again i guess she loved this series i'm having fun doing this series la Cienica's character she's the perfect example to me of the ones who seem to have it all can sometimes be the most insecure be the most miserable fighting and in a struggle within themselves so they put on this mask they put on this disguise you know they, he, she had the money she had the fashions and the popularity you know she had the physical features that made her conventionally attractive or so have it right but that's still not enough to fight those insecurities that's always going to be there Penny is much better than i am we first got introduced to her she was the classic character of the one that's secretly a bully you know, to the kids around her, they know her to be nasty, sassy, rude. She thinks she's all that. She's conceited, egotistical, right? But to the adults, to her parents, to Penny's parents, you know, to the teachers, she's like a goody two-shoes and she can do no wrong. But behind the scenes, everybody's like, wow, she really got y'all fooled. I'm just honored to be mentioned in the same breath as Penny. In relation to how many of y'all new kids or girls like La Cienica, Growing up in your neighborhoods, growing up in middle school, high school, maybe even college. You know, those ones that had that conceited attitude. They thought they were better than everybody. But hearing certain things about them, maybe if you get to speak to them a little bit more, you realize, oh, that's why she act like that. I always find it funny how they chose her to be the arch nemesis. And it was one of those situations where her and Penny would be like, why are we even friends? You know, the common friend they have together was Dijanae right we all know Dijanae her personality attracts all different type of personalities and it was that situation to where they all end up in a friend group together but then they really don't like each other but then you really think about it Penny never really had a problem with Lysianica you know when their house got burned down or whatever she was willing to let Lysianica stay blah 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 right but Lysianica is the one that was like oh your room oh you're this save it cornball I'm already cool by myself and your house Stinks. So many ways, La Cienica had more money. She had the better fashions, more popularity, if you want to call it that. But she was still jealous of Penny because Penny was more well-rounded. Penny was more grounded. You know, Penny had a better sense of reality. Ah! Some ways, the creators, the producers, and the writers, they did give her redeeming qualities as far as like, you know, she could tell when she did something wrong, even though it took the most out of her. For example, with the singing competition. This moment belongs to Agatha Ordinario. No matter how the other girl looked, her voice was way better. So she won. But was it Kelly and everybody was like, no, she's a bad representation of a winner because look how she looks. It took some convincing from Penny and Sticky to be like, La Cienega, you sang good, but you know she sang better. And if y'all remember, in the end, La Cienica won that second competition, but she knew she didn't really deserve it, so she gave it to Agatha. And in return, what? Agatha ended up inviting her anyway to sing with Alicia Keys. So in the end, she still got the prize. Going back to that, La Cienica was like, I only did it because I want something good to happen. Where it's kind of like, you only do something good because you expect good karma back. I did it because Proud put a hex on me. I don't get something out of this. Some people in real life are really like that. They only do something good or nice 
when it's beneficial to them. Like, okay, I'll do this nice apt, but I expect something five times, 10 times back in return. Like, I'm only doing this because I know it's gonna give me this later. And that's just how some people operate. That's just how some people are. The lowest is what? Zero. And let's just get to the elephant in the room, right? Or shall I say the clown shoes in the room? <laughs> Basically, one of the biggest gags in the storyline of the Proud family is how Lysianica has like huge 10 feet. Those are her feet. <laughs> and that's not to say that every person that acts like Lysianica in real life has an insecurity. That's why they act like that. But it is a common thing you'll find where those people that seem to have it together, they seem to have it all. It's something that they're hiding. You know, they'll never let you know. You might find out secretly, it might be revealed or exposed somehow, but those people that you think have it together, that you, some people may be jealous of because she has this, she has that, and look at me. But it's like, she has a whole bunch of stuff in her closet. She got skeletons in her closet. She got a size 15 shoe in her closet <laughs> that she don't want nobody to see. And what I like with the Proud family is most of the time, you know, we all get it, it's all jokes, but it's based on realism. And they use the gag of her having like those huge feet as like her insecurity. And that insecurity can be seen in real life through many things like, oh, how you seem to have it all, somebody seems to have it all, but their parents could be going through a divorce or they could be losing this or losing that or they doing bad in school. It's so, so many different things where it's like certain things are traumatic for some people. And those are the reasons why they act out or why they lash out or why they have this facade of supreme confidence when it's like, oh, that's all an act. Gotcha. <laughs> Dang, I can't stand you. Oh, y'all already know how I do with these breakdowns. There's always going to be that kind of controversy in this and y'all know what would these breakdowns be without a little bit of controversy if you made it this far in the video are y'all ready for this this has always been a controversial opinion and i've seen it here and there especially when the reboot came out and when the series came back out and people was re-watching episodes from the original series there was some talks of la cienega being like kind of almost anti-black and how she had these microaggressions against Penny, even calling her brother BB nappy. Oh look, if it isn't the proud twins, happy and nappy. Even if this wasn't their intentions, having La Cienica, like the Afro-Latina, having La Cienica be the main antagonist for Penny was in some way a reflection of how, for the most part, the black and Latino community they can come together, they get together, friendly with each other. You know, it's a bond. You know, some Latinos like to say the N-word and all that, right? They feel like it's a brotherhood, it's a connection. Like, well, we're all one and the same. But then there's always going to be that secret thing of one thinking that they're better than the other. And it's not directly said, but it's through different microaggressions and different sayings and different actions that you may pick up on where you seem to be you're supposed to be a bond you're supposed to be friends or arch enemies or whatever but it's like what is this nastiness based off of what is your jealousy or what is your dislike of me based off of you know we all in this neighborhood together we all in this friend group together why don't you like me so much and you think about it i never really saw la cienega and dejanay fighting and arguing and Dejeuner is Dejeuner, right? I seen the last video. For some reason, Penny, who seems more grounded in some aspects, La Cienega has such a problem with. And did that jealousy come from thinking like, oh, even though I'm rich and I'm this and I'm that and I'm popular, oh, Penny is popular too. Penny is pretty too. You know, she may not have as much money as me or my family or whatever, but like, hmm. She's kind of, she's competition. I got to watch out for her. You know, even though she doesn't have as much as me, she's still up there with me. Miss, I'm cute. I'm loud. I'm Penny. Pathetic. A lot of girls, a lot of women, some guys too, don't want to be friends with people that they secretly think are better than them or competition in some sense. You know, 
we could all be on the same level. We all doing this, all doing that. When your friends start doing a little bit better than you, then you kind of be like, mm, it's kind of like that secret jealousy. And I really want to know, do y'all think La Cienica was jealous of Penny in some sort? Not money-wise and all that. Because, like I said, La Cienica had that. She had the popularity. She had this. She had that. And that's another reason why she always tagged on Zoe, where it's like Zoe was like the easiest target for her because Zoe was the white, nerdy girl, lanky, Betty Spaghetti. But Penny was going to stand up for herself. Penny was going to let her have it. And Dijanae was more of like the neutral friend, like bridging them all together. So in some way, La Cienica did have some reasons to be a little jealous of Penny, no matter how much she seemed to have it all. Even back to when they was started the LPDZ girl group, the second group, Penny became the most popular one. Out of all of them, you could tell La Cienica seemed to be the most jealous, the most ready to get her back, the most ready to sabotage her. Because, like I said, you can have it all, but there's so many ways that other people around you, your associates or your friends, can still be doing better than you. Ooh, I can't stand her! This goes back to the reboot when we met her cousin, Labria, and when we found out that whole storyline of how La Cienica is jealous of her. Especially when she found out that she lost the weight because she used to be a little chubby. She lost the weight and all of her friends instantly connected to her and she seemed to be the one left out. And this is for La Cienica's quinceanera, quinceanera, right? But all her friends just gravitated towards her and La Cienica was like, the all went out. Honey, yeah, the glow yeah, up is real. Today it's about me. And you just have to come to the realization that La Cienica is one of those characters, one of those people in life you know, reflection of reality where certain people have those nasty attitudes, they're conceited, they're egotistical, they have slices of humility in them, but their ego is always going to outweigh that. And you just got to take them as they come. But thank goodness I'm an only child and cute. So with all of that being said, I want to hear from y'all. What did y'all think about La Cienica's character? Do you think she was jealous of Penny? Did you go to school with girls that remind you of La Cienica, girls in your neighborhood? And what do you think the creators and writers were trying to do when they introduced La Cienica as Penny's antagonist? And what do you think of that whole conversation when it comes to some people of the Latino community thinking that they're better than some black people? This should be a really interesting conversation. I can't wait to read your comments, interact with y'all. And, you know, we all give our opinions because La Cienica has always been an interesting character. So with that, please don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see y'all in the next video.